Hi guys, welcome back to Quran Logics, where I take a very quick look at the logics used and applied in the Islamic Quran. Now, last time I looked at the highly illogical and pretty stupid and, and actually quite vile concept of praying to get into heaven just to have sex with some virgins. Well, for men that is. Today I'm going to look at prayer, the requirements and, well, fasting as well. Now, in this book, in the in the Quran, there are hundreds of sentences where the alleged author, a god, a highly narcissistic creator god, threatens followers and non-followers alike with horrendous punishment if they don't do exactly as told. Now, in fact, in chapter 51 in the Quran, in sentence number 56, it says, we are created by this creator god with a single purpose, to grovel on our knees constantly, that is the number two task in our lives, to worship. After the number one thing is you need to believe that this, well, this Lord, this overlord actually exists. Now, how do we do this worshipping? Well, I have no idea because the Quran tells us we need to worship this creator God for some unknown reason, but does not say how or give us any instructions on what we need to do and what we need to say. Now, there are sentences which tell us, prostrate yourselves to Allah and worship Him. Sure, but that merely says I should worship, but not how. It says I can prostrate and then worship, but it does not say that this prostration is the actual worship. The Quran mentions hundreds, hundreds of times this worship, but never provides any instructions on how to do this. Because there are actions, sentences, you have to mumble certain things, you have to go through a whole sequence of what you have to do with your knees, with your arms, with your elbows. But the Quran doesn't tell you any of this. So this creator God is highly narcissistic and seems to suffer from a severe mental condition of inferiority and uncertainty. So it constantly threatens non-believers, making the worship of anything but this deity the worst crime imaginable. Apologists claim the word standing is found in the Quran, as is prostration, projecting the sequence known to them back into the Quran. They also claim that the Quran specifies five different prayer times, and they refer you to sentences all over the Quran, which, when you actually go and check, don't say what they claim they say. So we don't get the process, the sequence, the timing, the positions, nor do we get the soundtrack. Now, if I'm stranded on some remote island with only the Quran, will I ever be able to perform this worship thing? No, never. I would require access to an entire library to learn from other humans what this God forgot to tell us. Nevertheless, calling the Quran guidance for some reason. Because quite obviously, it is not. Yet we are presented over and over with direct and more veiled threats like, but there came after them successors who neglected prayer and pursued desire, so they are going to meet evil. So literally, it says succeeded after them, after the successors. <laughs> okay, but let's not get distracted from the content. If this being worshipped is so important for this God, why doesn't the Quran, the instruction manual issued by this God personally and word for word, not explain where to pray, when to pray, and most importantly, how to pray. If I play the simulation The Sims, do I make them worship me? No. So why does this God of the Muslims? Why does this God require so much worship? Why are the 70,000 angels who are created fresh and early every morning in heaven, note that heaven keeps earth time, not sufficient? Why more and more humans? where 80% or 85% or even 90% don't do this worship thing anyway, since they are not convinced and remain non-Muslims. And I'm not surprised given the lack of clear instructions and guidance. But it gets worse, because even if you go and access this library and read what humans over the last thousand years have written down as instructions of how to pray, you're going to freak, because they are unclear, imprecise and even contradict each other where the Quran doesn't even know for sure what direction you should point to, which is ludicrous and pretty nonsensical on a spherical planet anyway. 
So the man-made instructions are totally useless. You don't know which position will lead to paradise and your eternal sex with refurbished virgins and which to the pool bar in hell. In the Quran, you have several sentences sprinkled throughout the text, like this one in chapter 17, sentence 78, performs a lot, and the salat is not salat, but Arabic for prayer. Now, as is the case for every sentence in the Quran, it is vague and ambiguous and requires interpretation. Do you pray nonstop from noon when the sun starts to decline? Or from the sun declining to dawn? Or when it's dark to dawn? Didn't the authors know some places of this planet have no sunset, sunrise or darkness for months? So already from the word go, we have problems establishing what we need to do and when. What is required from the Muslim is to, instead of thinking and deciding something, is to consult with a scholar. Someone, the Muslim, whether male or female, can and will follow. So it's not the Quran allegedly written by a creator God, but humans who decide what should be done and when and how. And those humans a lot of times don't even know what the Quran says and simply resort to a tame and Allah knows best and simply hope for the best. Really, if I were gambling with my eternal afterlife, I would expect something clear and precise. Here we have some general rules, but then they contradict each other after half a millisecond. So Shias have different prayers than the Sunnis and Sunnis don't know what they are doing and disagree on almost everything. So this is one big mess. And yes, you guessed it, it gets worse. Because if Muslims are required to pray after sunset, how do they pray if there is no sunset? Islam and the Quran were conceived by Arabs and intended for Arabs on the Arabic Peninsula. The Quran does not know we're on a spherical planet and that there are Muslims where the sun does not set for months or if you're an ISS, I don't know, 16 times a day. So all these silly rules are obsolete there anyway. And there's a lot of rules once some old men with lots of time get their hands on this. But how are you supposed to follow these rules if the foundation they are based on, sun and moon, don't do what they do in Arab lands? Then they're stuck and can't do what is expected of them. And again, humans come in, non-Muslim humans, and provide phones, complete with Islamic prayer times and instructions to help out and show Muslims when, what, where, and how. Everything except the why. The why? remains a puzzle. Does it get worse? Yep. If you don't pray, there's no clear-cut punishment. You just don't get the bonus points. In the Sunnah, there are forms of punishment, like the freeing of a slave, a financial punishment, but nothing in the Quran as such. As always, it's vague and ambiguous. And we find the same logical flaw when we look at the Islamic so-called fasting. But here it's even worse since you can't drink any liquid for an extended period of time. I'm talking about 20 hours and more. Unlike simply not getting down on your knees and praying, dehydration is not funny anymore and can be extremely dangerous, especially in a hot and dry climate. Now, if we go to the details and analyze the technicalities, we can see here that if you are in the Middle East, the times are harsh. But in Europe, a Muslim barely gets two hours of sleep before the mindless rituals commence. That is ludicrous, inhumane. and. Well, now for the worst. How do you follow any of these silly rituals if there is no sunset at all or too many depending whether you are working on the ISS, like I said before, or if you are on Mars? What do you do then? Then you're completely stuck. It's not only on roughly a third of the planet where you have no clear sunrise or sunset of our star, but there are thousands of reasons why you could be prevented from seeing the sun or the crescent moon, and thus being unable to follow the rules laid out by some old men a thousand years ago on the Arabian Peninsula. Is any of this logical and befitting an all-knowing, perfect creator God?